is the disaster stock of the day, Voyager Digital. That's the one we're talking about here today, five bucks a share. This stock is down about 23% on some uh, massive kind of earth-shaking news that have obviously just caused the stock to be a disaster here. So in this video, we're gonna get into what this news is. I'm gonna give my opinion on this. Do I feel like this is like a buy the dip opportunity or do I feel like this is a buy-buy type opportunity to Voyager Digital? I'm kind of give my perspective on this because this is this was pretty big news, okay? So first off, if you're not familiar with, with Voyager, they're basically a crypto brokerage, all right? And they get a lot of customers through their, their high interest products they have where essentially if you hold Bitcoin through Voyager or other cryptocurrencies as well, you can make really, really uh, large amounts of interest on that essentially, okay? And so this is a company that's been insanely fast growth. Last year, they grew thousands of percent. They had quarters in the past where they grew 10,000 plus percent. Like the type of growth rates you almost never see with a public company, almost ever, like ridiculous, right? Even this year, this is expected to be slower growth for them, and the company is expected to grow revenues 187%, okay? Uh, I hold a lot of high-growth companies, and I've seen a lot of high-growth companies, but nothing I've ever seen is like a Voyager Digital. And the best part of this is, is next year, the company is expected to be profitable and nicely profitable. At least that's what analysts had, 51 cents a share, which is very, very impressive. And so here we are with this company, insanely fast growth, looking to get to profitability very soon here. And it seems like, oh my gosh, this is like a match made in heaven. This is like perfection, right? And then you get this, oh boy, okay, Voyager Digital falls on cease and desist orders from states, oh boy, okay. Now, first off, when you read that headline, that sounds awful. It's, if, you, if all you read was that headline and that's it, you would think that literally Voyager has a cease and desist in the United States of America and like the company can't be out there anymore or something like that, right? But it always pays to look a little further into the details and find out what's really going on, okay? Voyager Digital shares plummeted on Wednesday after the firm said it had received or is aware of a cease and desist order for its interest earning cryptocurrency products from New Jersey, Indiana, Kentucky, and Oklahoma. Okay, wait a minute. So. Yeah, this isn't like a cease and desist for the whole app or, you know, like like no one can use uh, Voyager anymore or something like that. It's on high interest cryptocurrency product, that high yield product we talked about at the, at the front of this, right? And in those four states there, that's very, very key. The crypto investment firm is in an ongoing communications with state regulators to better understand the orders and to, quote, clarify certain statements in the orders that Voyager believes are inaccurate. Okay. Voyager has allegedly been financing income generating businesses such as lending and staking of digital assets, at least in part through selling interest earning cryptocurrency accounts in violation of the securities law in New Jersey Bureau of Securities, said in a statement on its website, calling the accounts un unregistered securities. The accounts have raised at least $5 billion nationwide, the watchdog says. There were about 1.5 million Voyager Earn program accounts as of March 1st, of which around 52,800 were based in New Jersey, according to the statement. So it's a pretty good chunk, but of 1.5 million, it's a, not a huge chunk, right? Uh, but 52,000 there in New Jersey. Clients invest in Voyager Earn by depositing eligible digital tokens into their accounts in return for an attractive interest rate that's paid monthly in the same cryptocurrency they invest in. Okay? So... There's obviously something that, that gets a lot of people excited about using Voyager because usually they have the highest, for what I found, they usually have the highest interest rates you can pretty much get out there, right? So that attracts a lot of, of people, but it's attracted a lot of growth and it's also attracted now uh, scrutiny and more than just scrutiny, but now like cease and desist for that business in certain states. And so this is definitely a, a big, big deal. Not as big as like the, you know, the whole company being done or something like that, but it's still a big deal. Voyager pools cryptocurrencies deposited by such clients to fund its income generating activities and investments in other digital asset trading platforms, the Bureau of Security said. The Voyager Earn program accounts are not registered with the Bureau or, or any securities regulator authority nor are they otherwise exempt from reg registration, it said. The lack of regulatory oversight adds a layer of risk and makes it all the more important for individuals to do their homework and fully understand the offerings before investing in them. 
Scrutiny has been mounting on crypto lenders, which have attracted tens of billions of dollars in deposits by promising yields that far exceed those through traditional savings accounts. Obviously, a savings account's like a joke. In in through a lot of these crypto companies, like a Voyager, you can get three percent, five percent, seven percent. I've seen like even eight percent. Voyager competitor BlockFi agreed in February, so just a month ago, to pay a hundred million dollars to the Securities and Exchange Commission and state regulators as part of a settlement, and it said it would seek SEC approval for accounts that pay clients high yields for lending out crypto. All right, so it's not like this is just exclusive to Voyager. Or they're the only company that has had a deal with this. It looks like it's coming down on every single one of these uh, crypto brokerages, exchanges, things like that. Okay, now here's why this is very, 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 very important, and I mean very important. If we look at the numbers here, this company, you know, like I said, 187 percent growth was expected this year, and expect to be very, very profitable next year, right? Well, okay, now they have this massive, let's call it a legal f- fiasco on their hands, right? This is going to be a huge distraction for the management team. This is going to be, I would guess, a lot of legal fees, a lot of lawyer fees. I think we all know that, right? They're likely going to get a fine on top of that, maybe potentially big fines. So you know, we looked at that one, it was $100 million. Uh, so potentially a big fine coming. And now, who knows how much they're going to be able to promote the interest earning aspect of Voyager Digital, right? Which essentially means that there might not be as many people signing up for it if they can't promote this or if they can't have the product out there. Because a lot of people use, let's just be honest, a lot of people use Voyager Digital because of that reason. And so a lot of folks are looking at this and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, is this a situation now where Voyager is going to end up not having this type of growth. And I will say it's definitely a possibility that they won't have this type of growth now. If they have to tame that business way down, never mind if they just completely go away from it, they're not going to have that sort of growth because so many people come to Voyager for that reason. That's usually the number one aspect that people come over to Voyager for, okay? And now talking about profitability metrics, well, with all these legal fees that are going to be going on, And all that, oh man, that's going to eat into any sort of profitability in a massive, massive way. So this is where it's like, it's not as bad as the headline reads, but it's still bad. And it's still going to hurt all these numbers for Voyager Digital. And we can't sugarcoat that. We can't act like that's not going to exist for this company. Now, the good news for Voyager Digital, the very good news is I think Wall Street saw this coming because this stock has basically just been on a massive, massive sell-off for a long time now, despite putting up these ridiculous growth rates and all the promise that this company has, the stock hasn't been respected. This stock was $30 and it's, you know, five bucks. And so it seems like Wall Street, I don't want to say has priced in this scenario because obviously the stock sold off more today, but that could be also retail selling off this stock today. But it seems to me like a lot of Wall Street was already pricing this in because literally as Bitcoin came back and as this company reported unbelievable numbers, the stock price never got reflected. It just continued to kind of be in this vicious downtrend and downtrend. And it was like, what is going on here? Like Bitcoin could could go up and Voyager still wouldn't move. And it's like, so I think Wall Street probably saw this coming because they looked at these other crypto companies that are getting these fines and, and having these cease and desist situations happen and whatnot. And they're like, it's, you know, it's just a ticking time bomb. Like, wait till Vo- it's coming, going to hit Voyager eventually. And today was the big day it hit Voyager, right? And so, yeah, I think Wall Street probably saw this one coming. And that's why the stock has just been in a vicious, vicious downtrend. So meaning essentially, um, you know, if you're expecting a lot more fallout from Voyager, it's a possibility, but I would say it's a low possibility. It's a low probability the stock falls a bunch more because so much of this bad news was likely already priced in from Wall Street. And today is likely kind of a retail freak out more than I would call it a Wall Street freak out. I think the Wall Street freak out is what kind of took the stock from $30 down to, you know, where it was trading at yesterday, which was $6 and some change, right? Now, from my perspective, so I have a small position in Voyager Digital. I also have a, a small position in uh, VGX tokens, which is their um, essentially like their loyalty uh, program. Okay, and so buy or buy for me. All right. So if I think about companies that usually I like to buy the dip on, right, which is most of the stocks I own. If I think about like uh, a tattooed chef, if I think about a company like Honest, if I think about a company like The Planet, if I think about a company like PayPal, Meta, those so, those sorts of companies. 
I have no problem buying the dip in those sorts of companies. And the main, main reason is like, usually I'm expecting those companies to hit growth rates and not have to deal with a, a massive legal situation on their hands. Now, what I'll say about Voyager Digital in this situation, this is a little different, okay? And so for me, I'm not as incentivized to run out there and go buy Voyager shares today. As a matter of fact, I didn't buy any Voyager shares today. And usually if I get a massive dip in a stock, even if it's a small position for me like Voyager is, I'll still go out and buy it. But I'm not, I'm not going out there and buying this one here today. And the reason being is I'm also not saying buy to it either. And that's very important. I'm just kind of holding. And the reason being is I'm looking at it, right? And I see all these other stocks down huge. I see this Voyager situation, and their number one best selling point of Voyager is being hurt in a massive way starting today, right? We don't know how much they're going to be able to advertise that business. We don't know any of that. And that was the biggest reason people use Voyager. And I know a lot of people in real life, they use Voyager. And every single one of them, the main reason was, I'm going to be able to make this amount of interest on holding my Bitcoin there, or holding my Ethereum or whatever, and it's more than I can get anywhere else. And so that was the number one most attractive thing about Voyager is basically being put on a shelf now. And there's going to be no clarity on when this is going to get cleared up. I, we know it's going to be at least many months. You know, when you get into this sort of situation with the SEC and, you know, you've got a cease and desist situation, this isn't getting resolved anytime soon. This at a minimum, and I mean at absolute minimum, is like a six-month process. But this is probably more like a 12 to 24 month type process, okay? It's gonna cost a company a fortune. And once again, it's gonna likely hurt its growth rates across the board, across the board. And so when I look at this, I'm like, the, the, the negative thing Voyager already had going for it is there's so much competition in the crypto space. You have so many competitors out there. You have the Coinbases and you have the FTXs. You have companies like Robinhood getting in the space. Like everybody wants to be in the crypto brokerage, crypto exchange space. This is a, you know, it's a growing space, but it's so competitive, it's ridiculous. I mean, insanely competitive. And so now there's a situation with Voyager where it's like they don't just have competition, but now they got, you know, regulators up there. You know what? And that's not ending anytime soon. And so for me with the stock, I'm like, there's too many other deals in the market right now. There's too many other deals in and ones that make me feel safer um, than a Voyager Digital. And there's no doubt this company, if they can keep their interest lending program, right, that's a huge win for this company long term. But this situation can likely drag out for a long time. And so if anybody's expecting any short-term positivity here, it's likely not coming. And so that's why for me, I'm just, it's just a hold for me. And it's like, you know, I, I'm going to put my money in other stocks that I see huge upside in as well, that I feel like is way less risk than Voyager with this whole situation. So that's, that's me when it comes to stock. It's a hold for me. It's not a buy and it's also not a buy. It's just a, it's just a hold. So yeah, I'd love to hear your guys' opinion in that comment section as always. It's when you're dealing with government, man, don't expect anything to move fast. Just trust me on that. When you're dealing with government, when you're dealing with regulators, do not expect anything to move fast. These things drag out for a while, okay? For a while. So don't, don't, don't get pumped on any sort of, sort of, this is going to get solved quick. This isn't going to get solved quick, and it's going to be extremely costly, and it will hurt business, okay? So yeah, let me know your guys' opinion in that comment section as always. I appreciate you guys joining me. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, and other than that you know, down day in the market today, definitely. I saw somebody on CNBC, they were making, uh, they, were, they were basically saying today was going to be super down and uh, Thursday was going to be super down as well. They said every single year at this time, certain outflows happen. It, it was an interesting perspective. And he was like, he was like a hundred percent like confident. And it wasn't even like any anticipation. He was a hundred percent confident. And I was like, geez, man, this guy's 100% confident. He said, Wednesday, the market's going to go down and Thursday, the market's going to go down. He was like, it was the most insane thing, but you know, as far as right now, he's looking good. Anyways, guys, much love as always and have a great day.